Hello, and welcome to this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One. Have you thought about making some extra money this summer? Or are you just looking for an outlet for those bushels of extra tomatoes from your garden? Perhaps you've thought about turning your favorite hobby, whether it's gardening or baking or home food preserving, into a product that you could sell at a local farmer's market. Well, we're here today with some helpful information from K-State Research and Extension to help those who may be interested in selling food products at a farmer's market in Kansas. I'm Linda Beach. I'm the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and I'm here today with Londa Nwadike, who is our K-State Research and Extension Consumer Food Safety Specialist. Well, Londa, we're so glad you could be with us today. Um, can you tell us what are some of the benefits of having farmers markets in a local community? Well, farmers markets are a great opportunity for consumers to go out and meet the farmers and see the people that are raising your food or the people that are making your food. And it's also a great opportunity for the consumers to actually give that money directly to the farmers so there, there's not um, as many other places where the money goes before it actually gets back to the farmer. So it's a great way that customers can find out um, just getting healthy local food, and it's also a great fun environment. It's a good opportunity for um, local farmers to get a little extra cash for some of the products that they make as well. Yeah, and it is fun to shop at a farmer's mm -hmm. market. Well, if someone is considering selling food products, mm -hmm. there are some things we need to think about, right? Yeah, exactly. Can so you tell we, us? We want to make sure that when we're selling foods, we want to make sure that they're safe, ultimately, because we want to make sure that, you know, when a customer is going to a market, you know, such as myself, I have three little kids, I want to make sure that the food I'm buying isn't going to make me or my kids or my family sick. So we just want to make sure that things are sold safely and so that everyone can enjoy the products from a farmer's market. So if I'm selling food, how do I know how do I know how to start? Well, so we have a guide here um, from Kansas State University. We work jointly with the Kansas Department of Agriculture on this publication and that we update it every year. So um, you can look for the most recent version. It'll be listed on the top here, which year it was revised. And this publication just helps you to think about um, the things that are gonna need a license and things that don't need a license. So who is it that makes those rules? Who, who governs the farmer's market? Yeah, the Kansas Department of Agriculture are the one that actually um, set the rules and they enforce the rules at a farmer's market. Okay, well, garden produce is probably the hallmark of items to sell when we come to a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So if we're thinking about fresh produce, what do we need to think about? Well, so when you're making, when you're raising fresh produce, we want to make sure that the produce that's being raised is going to be done in a really safe manner. So some of the things, the basic things we think about is just making sure the water, the soil, your hands, your equipment, just making sure that all those things are clean. Uh, you can use um, manure or compost, but just make sure that you're doing that um, in a safe manner. And so um, does K-State have any help for farmers who, or, or gardeners, just mm -hmm. backyard gardeners that may need to know more about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have actually a website um, that K-State has on produce safety. And so um, the website address, you can go to K-State's website and then probably just put in the search box, put in um, produce safety and you would find um, that information there. And on that website, we have an, a lot of different information on um, produce, raising produce safely and giving a lot of different tips. It's also helpful in case you need to have um, and in case you need to have any sort of certifications or something for selling to different um, buyers, because some buyers might require different um, certifications and so on when you're selling fresh whole produce. So, and then we also have um, a number of workshops that will be coming up on produce safety. So um, just contact your local extension office and the local extension office can help you to find where specifically that info, where those workshops will be and when they'll be on produce safety. So it's more than just growing a few things in the backyard and taking them downtown to the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, K-State Research and Extension has some great information to help you if you've thought about doing this. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about the rules and the regulations which govern the sale of food products at Kansas Farmer's Market. 
there's more information that you need to know, so stay tuned. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammondAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving Western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammond Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive-up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U-Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. Making moving and storing easy. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Welcome back to Extension Ed Talks, where we're talking about what someone would need to know to sell food at a farmer's market in Kansas. I'm Linda Beach. I'm the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences, and I'm joined by London Wadake, who is our K-State Research and Extension Consumer Food Safety Specialist. Well, Londa, you mentioned that there are some rules that govern food sales at a Kansas farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what those are. Well, so generally speaking, the Kansas Department of Ag has tried to say things that are higher risk for making somebody sick, those things we need to have a license. So the things that are lower risk for somebody needing, for somebody getting sick from eating it, those things we do not need to have a license. So the things that you do not need a license for, you can still make in your home kitchen, doesn't need to be inspected. But if it's something that does need a license, that means you have to do it in a place that's not your home kitchen. So it could be like a kitchen in your basement or a kitchen at the local church or something, but it has to be a place that can be inspected. Okay, so an inspected kitchen goes along with needing a license. That's right. So. Okay, well let's keep that in mind as we talk about some of these examples that we have here today. So why don't you tell us about what you've got? Yeah, so <laughs> there's a number of different foods that don't need a license. So things that are lower risk you don't need to have a license for. So things like um, baked goods, so like um, yeast rolls or 
breads, quick breads, as well as yeast breads, um, cookies, mm -hmm. things that you normally wouldn't put in the refrigerator for safety. So things that normally can just be at room temperature and still be safe. Those things do not need a license to be sold at a farmer's market. So you can sell, you know, any kind of cookies and breads and so on without having a license. Okay. Then the next category that we can talk about then is produce. And, and of course, when we think about farmer's markets, we think about produce, of course. Exactly. Which is a great place to buy your fresh local produce. So for if you're selling whole produce, um, in general, you do not need to have a license. The only exception might be if you're selling sprouts, but that's, that's a different category. But if you're selling... But if it's a backyard garden type food or a field crop type food like your ear of corn. Mm -hmm. Yep, you do not need to have a license. So, uh, so sweet corn, you know, zucchini, potatoes, onions, apples, um, tomatoes, you know, peaches, whatever sort of fresh whole produce you're selling, you would not need to have a license to sell um, those sort of products. But we do need to use those safe practices that you told us about earlier and the produce mm -hmm. safety guidelines, okay? Exactly, yeah. All so right. make sure that you're doing it safely because a lot of times people are not going to be cooking the tomato before they're eating it, so sure. there's no real way of really making it safer. So we want to make sure that you're doing it as safely as possible, yes. Okay, so we've got some other things on the table as well. Um, what can you tell me about the home canned goods? Yeah, so canned foods, there's a little more nuances to selling canned foods. So um, if you're selling canned jams or jellies, you do not need to have a license for them as long as they're regular sugar levels. So if it's a, just a typical strawberry jam or strawberry jelly, um, you do not need to have a license to sell that. Uh, jalapeno jelly is a different category that we'll talk about in a minute, but okay. if it's just a normal jam or jelly, you don't need a license for that. Also for um, like canned pears, um, any sort of canned fruit, you do not need to have a license for that. So these products are considered to be lower risk. Um, they don't typically need refrigeration for safety, and so those sort of products would not require a license. Some other items that would be in that same category would be um, if you're selling like granola, or if you're selling even ground flour, or if you're selling popcorn, or just things that Homemade don't... Homemade baking mixes is something I've seen at the mm -hmm. farmer's market as well. So. Exactly, yeah. So things that don't need to be refrigerated for safety, Generally speaking, you, generally speaking, you don't need a license. But we have a lot more detail in that publication that I showed you this earlier. Well, and, and I'm a home canner, so I know that these kinds of acidic foods mm -hmm. um, are canned with the most basic canning equipment, a boiling water bath mm -hmm, canner. Mm -hmm. So that's something that um, we can keep in mind. If it uses a different kind of equipment, maybe right. there are some additional things to think about. Mm -hmm, exactly. All yes. right. Well, I think I see cheesecake next. Yeah. So the next category that we'll get into is things that do need to have a license. So, so this side of the table does not need to have a license, but now this side of the table, you do need to have a license to sell these products. So something like cheesecake, very tasty, but you want to make sure that you're keeping your cheesecake in your refrigerator for safety. So therefore, you do need to have a license. So if you're selling something like cheesecake, that would also include um, like carrot cake with a, che a cream cheese frosting, mm -hmm. a filled donut, a custard type of product, or um, oh, a cream something. pie with the meringue topping. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So any baked good that needs to have refrigeration for safety, uh, you need a license, and that means you can't do it in your normal home kitchen. You would need to have it do it in an inspected space or an inspectable space. Okay. So, now, the watermelon, you know, doesn't it belong up here with the rest of the produce? Right. So once you get into cutting produce, then you have to be more careful. Mm. So when it's fresh and whole, you don't need to have a license. But things like cut melon, cut tomato, and cut leafy greens, if they're cut beyond normal harvesting, so like for leafy greens, I'll say chopped leafy greens, um, those sort of products, you need to keep those in the refrigerator for safety. And so that means you also need to have a license to sell those sort of products. So we want to make sure you're Okay, so a salad mix that where mm -hmm. we've chopped it up and it's ready to go. Right. Yep. Needs a license. Yep. But so if, if I only clipped the head of lettuce out of my garden and mm -hmm. brought it 
it mm -hmm. would not need a license. That's right. Yep. Okay. It's yeah. confusing. So it's yeah. worth understanding the rules. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've got some other things at the end of the table. Yeah. So then canned <laughs> foods, again, we talked about earlier, the canned foods over here do not need a license, but these canned foods do need to have a license. So things like pickles, you do need to have a license <clears throat> to make sure, because that does require some extra um, precautions to make sure it's safe as possible. So pickles can be sold at a farmer's market, but they need to have a license. Things like home canned green beans, home canned um, meats, and home canned uh, carrots cannot be sold at a farmer's market because they need to be done in a, a pressure canner and um, they need to be done, well actually they need to be done in a retort canner, so they cannot be sold at a farmer's market. Okay, and one last yep. jar at the and end of the table. So things like salsa, we want to send them in to get them tested first to see what category they fall into. So they might fall into the category of not needing a license or they might fall into the category of needing a license. So we just want to make sure that we know um, how safe they are. So just send them in to um, a lab here in Manhattan at, at Kansas State University and they can check it for you and make sure it's safe to sell. Great, and I bet a local extension office can help connect people with that lab. Exactly. All right, so a license or not a license, is that the only thing that we need to think about with these food products to go to a farmer's market? Yes, so if you're selling baked goods in particular, you want to make sure that you label the product or at least have the label or at least have the ingredients available so that people know um, what ingredients are in it. So on the label, you just need to have what product it is, so um, yeast rolls, um, the quantity, so you're selling you know, six or seven, whatever it is, um, who is, who, who made it basically. And then um, if there's more than two ingredients, you need to have the ingredient list to make sure that um, if people are allergic to anything that they know what's in there. Okay, so you've mentioned a license several times. Where do we get a license? Yep, so the Kansas Department of Agriculture is where you can get your license from. Um, and you can contact the state um, Kansas Department of Agriculture here in Manhattan. Um, their information is available in the publication that we mentioned. Um, you can, uh, talk, again, talk to your local extension office and they can help you with finding that publication or finding the, the Kansas Department of Agriculture's information. Great. Well, thanks, Linda. A lot of good information. When we come back, we're going to talk about selling ready-to-eat food and offering samples at a farmer's market in Kansas. So stick around. $10,000 With seven agents in three locations, Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated can meet your every need when it comes to your next sale. Visit them at HammettAuction.com and you'll find all their upcoming sales including farms, ranches, as well as farm equipment and even real estate listings, both residential and commercial. They've been serving Western Kansas since 1983 and with offices in Stockton, Russell and Hayes, they're always nearby to assist you. Hammett Land and Auction Incorporated, contact them today. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Todd Pankratz, an OBGYN who is now accepting patients. This means women can receive local specialized care for high-risk pregnancies, infertility, medical weight loss, and various surgeries. With Dr. Pankratz and on-staff physicians, the hospital hopes to serve as a premier facility for women's health care, and this care extends to the entire family as more than 60 babies are welcomed here each year. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. 
Make moving and storing your home or business easy with storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria. With two facilities, they can store anything from antiques to automobiles and everything in between. Interior units for items needing special care. Drive up units of all sizes, perfect for home or business. And outside storage for trucks, boats, and RVs. As an authorized U Haul dealer, they have everything for your next move across town or across the country. Storage solutions of Hayes and Victoria, making moving and storing easy. Western Auction and Real Estate LLC is ready to travel to you. Their team includes auctioneers and real estate specialists that will exceed your expectations. They offer experience in agriculture real estate, commercial and residential sales, and farm equipment auctions. Plus, they conveniently travel to your location. And it doesn't stop there. Visit westernauctionandrealestate.com today to shop their online equipment auctions too. For professionalism from concept to completion, it's Western Auction and Real Estate. Well, welcome back to Extension Ed Talks. I'm Linda Beach, the Ellis County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And joining me is Londa Nwadike, who is our K-State Research and Extension Consumer Food Safety Specialist. Well, in this final section of our program, we're gonna be talking about the considerations for selling food that is ready to eat at a farmer's market, or even offering samples. So Londa, what do we need to mm -hmm. know about that? Well, if you're going to be selling ready-to-eat foods, so foods that you're going to be eating at the market, so foods for immediate consumption, so if it's something like selling beer rocks that are hot, ready to eat, or pizza, or whatever it is, if you're selling it ready-to-eat, um, if, you're, if you're doing it for a profit, well, if you're doing it as a, you know, just a person make, trying to make a profit, if you're doing it less than six times per year, you do not need to have a license. But if you're doing it more than six times per year, you do need to have a license. So if you're doing it quite a bit, you need to have a license. If it's like your 4-H club or your church group or a school group, whatever it is, if you're doing it as a fundraiser, you don't need to have a license no matter how many times you do it per year. But we still want to make sure that you're doing it as safely as possible. So um, we have some, some different things that we want to make sure that you're doing. Um, and some of these requirements actually are the same whether you're selling foods for immediate consumption or if you're giving, offering samples. Because again, we just want to make sure that you know, nobody that eats at a farmer's market is getting sick because that would give a bad reputation to the market as well as to you. And, and we just want to make sure that things are as safe as possible. So, Okay. Well, you've brought lots of things to tell us about. So what do yeah. we need to know about these? So this over here at, at, at the end here is, is um, a hand washing station. So again, if you're going to be selling foods for immediate consumption at the market, and again, this is whether you need the license or not, and also, if you're going to be offering samples at the farmer's market, um, you need to have a hand washing station either in your booth or maybe the booth right next to you. So we want to make sure that you're going to be having clean hands when you're going to be selling the mm -hmm. food. And even if you're wearing gloves, which again, we do recommend that, well, I guess require that you have gloves or that you just don't touch the food that's ready to eat with your bare hands. So you could also use tongs or whatever, um, but gloves is one option. Even if you're wearing gloves, you still need to wash your hands because when you're putting on the glove, you could get the, outside the glove dirty if your hands are dirty. Mm -hmm. So you need to wash your hands. Um, so it, the hand washing station doesn't have to be anything expensive or anything fancy. Just need to have a place for the water to come out. Just need to have a container here where you can have water. A continuous flow spigot is really important because okay. you can turn it on and leave it on mm -hmm. and then rub your hands underneath it. Um, you just need to have some hand soap and need to have paper towels and something to catch the water in um, when you're washing your hands. So, so that's really it for a hand washing station. It doesn't have to be fancy, but just make sure that you can wash your hands. Great idea. And okay, then these. also, um, if you're going to be if you're going to be using like knives or if you're going to be using spoons where you're going to be needing to wash them or use them again, again we want to make sure that you're um, that those utensils are safe. So if you're using cutting boards, you know, over multiple times, or again, knives, um, you just need to have a, a wear washing station. Um, it, it can, again, it can be really simple, it, just for at the farmer's market, it doesn't have to be stainless steel, just, you know, three dish pans is fine. It's easy that they're different colors, but they can be all the same color, that's fine. And you just need to have uh, one for washing, so just you know, using some dish soap and, and warm water and just a dish cloth to, to wash the dishes in. Mm -hmm. And then um, you need to have a bucket just of clean water for rinsing. 
Um, again, warm water is good. And then um, you need to have another bucket for um, sanitizing. So you can use something like Clorox or you can use a different, you know, ammonium, uh, quaternary ammonium or something like that. If you're using something like Clorox, you do want to make sure that you're using um, an indicator test strip to know what the concentration is to make sure it's the right concentration. And then just having, just letting them air dry on paper towels is fine. Great. Okay. So if we're going to be giving people food that they eat at a farmer's market, we've got some additional rules mm -hmm. that we need to follow to make right. sure the people stay safe. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So licensing and labeling and handling ready to eat food. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that a vendor needs to think about at a farmer's market? Yep. So just a few other things that we want to make sure people think about too is, is um, collecting sales tax. So we want to make sure that we're collecting um, sales tax. So uh, the Kansas Department of Revenue has more information on that. Again, in the publication that we showed earlier, you can find that information. Um, also making sure that if you are going to be selling produce by weight, we want to make sure that the scale is accurate. Because if I'm buying a pound of tomatoes, I want to make sure that I'm actually getting a pound. So um, the Kansas Department of Ag has more information on um, scale certifiers. And then you can al always check with your local farmer's market because they they might have stricter requirements or different requirements than what we've talked about. But so just make sure that you um, that you're familiar with what your local market is requiring. As so well. they might not have rules that are less strict, but they might add extra things on to the kinds of things we talked about. Exactly, okay. exactly. Some farmers markets might say no samples, for example, but, but at the state level you can, you can, it is okay to have samples. Okay. All right. Well, there's a lot to think about mm -hmm. if a person wants to be a vendor at a farmers market in Kansas, and particularly if we're selling food. Well, if you need more information, or if you need the uh, extension bulletins that uh, Londa has mentioned today, be sure to check with your local county extension office to be able to get your personal copy of these materials. Um, or also, Londa mentioned there are some extra things, products that needed testing, things that uh, where you might have some additional requirements to think about. Your local extension office can help to connect you to those experts as well. I just want to remind you that K-State Research and Extension is a statewide network that provides unbiased, research-based information from Kansas State University and other state and national experts to every county in the state of Kansas. And we want to encourage you to get acquainted with your local Extension office and the programs and personnel that are there. Well, thanks for joining us on this episode of Extension Ed Talks on Next Tech Local One.